will be given by Nicole. Um, everybody's met Nicole up to this point. You met Ken as well, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so statistics. Let's do that first. Um, in the month of August, our true intake number was 65 animals. That includes 29 owner surrenders, 36 transferred animals. And we had 57 outcomes, 46 adopted, 9 animals reclaimed by owners that were strays, and 2 animals that were transferred out of our care. Does anybody have any questions on the statistics? Moving on. All right, so for the direct mail campaign, um, I suspended doing the summer appeal, which was the kitten season appeal, which we ran from spring and it went on into summer. Um, decided it was time to go ahead and stop that one. Since we're preparing for the holiday appeal, I'm working on a draft right now that'll have Team Matt um, hopefully next week. My aim this year is to get holiday um, direct mail pieces into mailboxes by Thanksgiving weekend. I want it to be the very first appeal that people get this year from any charity. The fall newsletter went into the mail on the 13th. Everybody has gotten theirs by now. We had 481 pieces that we mailed out. This was our biggest newsletter mailing that we've done since I got here. Um, and I was really, really pleased with the content of this particular newsletter. So I'm um, really happy about that. I'm working on copy now for the holiday edition, which I want to come out. Um, I want it to truly be a holiday edition and come out in December, not just a winter edition. It comes out in January. Um, since the last board meeting, someone beat me to the punch on this. The silent auction ad is already up on the website. It's probably, was it Steve that did that, maybe? Um, I don't know. Nicole is working on her biography, and we have photos of her now, so next week she'll be added to the staff page as well. Since the last board meeting, media has been pretty good. Um, we just saw today, Sharon brought us a copy of The Flume. Um, I had done this um, interview with Mike Potter from The Flume. Um, largely about Nicole joining the organization. They wrote a really positive article about that. And um, the sidewalk sale, which is coming up this weekend, was picked up twice by High Timber Times. It was also featured in the um, last Friday's edition of the Bloom. Buster's Pet Supply. They've gotten really friendly with us lately. Um, Nancy's called a couple of times over the last um, 10 days or so. Um, the first call was in response to the silent auction um, solicitation that she got. They will be doing something very nice for us for the silent auction. I don't know what, but they will be doing something. Because I sent them the letter. Yes, and they I... responded to that letter. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. So um, in the first conversation that we had, um, she invited us also to join them for um, a festival that they're planning in the parking lot that will be the first weekend in October, which we are absolutely committed to being at um, one way or another because this is such a special invitation. Um, then she called day before yesterday and just went on and on about how much she loves our newsletter. Um, she's just excited. She feels like new life has been breezed into the organization. And she um, apparently, in their new space that they have, they have just an extra... Um, like empty space that they rent out for dog training classes and such. She said, you know what, you guys come set up here, you can do Santa photos, you take all the money. Oh, wow. Just want to lend you the space. So I went yeah. ahead and scheduled that for um, Saturday, December 1st. Santas are being, um, I'm looking for Santas now. Good. <laughs> but we're going to be there from 11 to 3, and we will have a Santa there. Um, and Nicole and I still need to powwow about that event, and I'm working out the logistics of it. I also, while I had her on the phone, went ahead and um, told her that we're looking to expand our offsite adoption program next year, by the way, <laughs> and asked them if they would um, join us as partners in our live-in offsite cat program, set up like a cat condo there, have a couple kittens or an adult cat at any given time for adoption. And she said, absolutely, that sounds pretty doable. She sounded very positive about it. Um, in the same week, we got a phone call from Healthy Pet Supply in response again to our solicitation for something for the silent auction. They too will do something very nice for us, and they asked us if they could be a cat offsite partner. So, um, we're aiming to get cats in there next week. Wow. Um, thanks to Nicole's really ambitious transfer from Denver Animal Control today, we will have cats that can go next week. Um, and fortunately, we were able to pick up seven sterilized cats this time, which is great. Um, 
We did win the um, award check from pickupmystuff.org, the thrift yeah, shop yeah, yeah. in Pine, from last month. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kurt came over to the shelter the other day. We did a, um, we shot some photos of the um, check presentation. Um, it was $795 and some change, so that's nice money. That was really easy to get. Um, Nicole and I are going to order logo gear. Um, had a conversation with Steve about this a couple of um, a couple of weeks ago, and we chose some things that we think are going to be really nice: um, t-shirts, some polo fleece vests, um, some polo shirts for the staff to wear that I think will give a a, a look of uniformity and professionalism to the shelter. Um, we're going to order some things that we want that we're going to buy. Um, we're going to keep this a very small order um, initially. But I would welcome any of you that want to look at the colors that we have and the styles that we're looking at ordering. If you want to go ahead and special request something, we'd love to go ahead and get it for you. Um, the company that we're ordering from, what's the name of that company? Oh, it's three letters. E something. A A -E. <laughs> anyway, they've got our logo already on. Um, they, they've got our logo. They have produced, was it their, uh, the fleece vest that you had before, Kathy, that I think yeah. they, the really nice fleece vest that you had? Um, they're the ones that did that, so uh, they can do um, embroidery for vests and for polo shirts, and they can do screen printing for t-shirts too. So. so you have a little catalog at the shelter? If you want we to. have a catalog at the shelter, and we've um, tagged some styles and some colors that we think the logo will look good on. And if any of you can stop by within the next few days and let us know what you think you might like, we'd like to go ahead and move on an order next week. Why don't you just give us a deadline, a date, so we can just, you know, do or die. Okay, uh, why don't you come in by Wednesday? Okay. All right. Staffing. So, Nicole started last week. Um, Brandy turned in her resignation. Her last day will be on September 29th. Um, Nicole and I met about staffing the other day, and there was a woman who had just sort of randomly, when we didn't have a position open, submit a resume, who happened to have a lot of volunteer management experience. Um, which got my wheels turning on um, phasing out the shelter associate part-time position, which is the one that Brandy has been filling for us, and instead hiring a part-time volunteer coordinator. And I called this woman in for a preliminary conversation about this. We had not posted the position up to this point. Um, as it turns out, she does have part-time availability. However, we cannot meet her salary requirements. So. Um, in response to Brandy's resignation, Nicole and I had a follow-up conversation about that and decided to um, go ahead and just generally post the volunteer coordinator position. So I'm going to send that out via email blast um, to about 100 of our volunteers, and we'll put it on the website. And if any of you have any other ideas for how you think we should um, advertise this position in a targeted way locally. I'd love to hear your ideas. What about that, the Employment Board on Pine Camp? The Employment Board on Pine Camp. It's under okay. classifieds. Yeah. Yeah. So Pine Camp and 285 Bound, they can definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be working on Bernard's review next week. Um, Does it cost anything for flu and hustling? I don't know. Yeah, they do have a section, you're right. Yeah. I would consider, I, I think what I'd like to do is send this out via email, put it on the website, post on the web bulletin boards, see what kind of response we get, and then maybe pursue that option. Um, there was a discussion that we had that I brought to the table shortly after I began last year um, when I learned that we were accepting 100% of the stray dogs from Park County Animal Control but not charging them any fee at all. Um, Nicole had much the same reaction that I did when I heard this information. And um, I do think that it's time for us to, again, revisit this conversation with Park County. Um, it would be completely reasonable for me to go to them towards the end of this year and say, we're looking at our budget for next year and we will no longer be able to continue to provide free services for you. Um, I understand that it's um, an economically challenged county and no one ever wants to pay money for animal control services or for contract services um, to have a humane society take their animals, but we could charge them 
even just a small fee, and it would be better than no fee at all. Um, so we will look at um, templates for what kind of arrangement could be made. Um, but if anybody has an objection or um, input into the conversation, I would welcome it. Um, Do you know how much other places charge? That's something that we were talking about today, and I don't. Um, that's something that we need to look at. Not for this size, but it's abs it's unheard of that you would be doing this for free. Absolutely. Well, and they collect unheard fines, of. too, I think, don't they? They, they must. For they do, and I don't know, you know how much that even supports of their operational costs, which is not really our problem. Um, and we do provide them with dog food. They apparently don't have it in their budget to buy dog food for their shelter, again, which is not our problem, and it's really not even that relevant to the discussion, but... Um, yeah, um, I've got some friends in Seattle that are at the director level at shelters that have contracts with local animal control jurisdictions that provide all of the sheltering services. Now, we don't provide, they do have their own facility, and initially they hold the animals there for the legally required stray hold. However, we are committed to taking 100% of their animals, some of whom are not adoptable, um, and we should be compensated for the service that we're providing. Definitely, any other uh, shelter that I've worked with has charged. Mm -hmm. we have right. Um, my thought charged. was to right. look at what other shelters do and perhaps in quantifying what we think is reasonable to ask of them is an initial veterinary services fee. Maybe we can try to determine um, the average cost, I mean, it really is inconsequential to them how long animals stay in our care, length of stay, how long before they're adopted, or ultimately if they're euthanized. Um, but I think that we can try to quantify um, the average um, figure for veterinary services that we provide, and that would be a reasonable thing for them to, for us to ask them for or ask them for a portion of. So, If you have a list of questions, um, I have, my friend runs Boulder, you may, I can pass them along. Wow. If you could actually um, or you want contact your friend and maybe do some of the initial legwork on this, sure. I would really appreciate it. Um, this is something that sort of fell on the wayside for us, um, in part because asking these questions and gathering this information and trying to make an informed decision on what to do um, was something that just fell to the back burner. Okay. Um, but it's time to resurrect it. So I can do that. Um, I still think it's super important to help local first, you know. So I don't want it to end up being a deal well, breaker for them right. by any means. We've done it. I, I don't regret doing it in the past. I think it, it's a good thing that we've reestablished a relationship with them that has, in the yeah. past, gone by the wayside. But I completely think right. agree with you. Absolutely. It's time they start paying for it. Yeah, it's, and it, they've been very match. fortunate to get away through all of 2012 with having completely free services provided. And it's my understanding, um, in the last time that we had conversations about this, that they were driving two counties away to take their animals somewhere else. Well, that's a pretty hefty gas bill for them, um, to be able to take them just down the street, and often we'll go and pick them up from that shelter. So. Hey, Marty, did you, I know last year when it was raised, our um, late last year. I think Wendy and you were going to go down and meet with them. I mean, did you guys do it, that? It I know you never came up in the conversation. We okay. all met for lunch. Um, Karen and Steve and Wendy and some of the officers and I, and it ended up being more of an introduction and a meet and greet. We really did not discuss business. Okay. And we have not had an opportunity for all of us to get together since then. Okay. Um, and I, I don't want to... Um, in any way um, make this sound like I'm devaluing the relationship and I have no no you know desire to alienate this organization you know this agency from us mm -hmm. it's, it's a really healthy positive partnership um, and we have a very strong rapport with the individual officers who work there um, but this is something that between our agency and the county we should be able to work out right do we so. have a record of how many animals they surrender to us like, oh. do we track we can absolutely we can absolutely track that information. Yeah, and that should be something that we should get from Animal Shelter Manager at least since the beginning of 2012, yeah. since we started using Animal Shelter Manager um, for all of our transactions in December of last year. So um, we'll look at that. 
clinic has done 144 surgeries to date. Um, yay! Volunteer program. Really exciting things have happened with the volunteer program since the last board meeting. A um, couple of real key volunteers have come through. Um, I was beside myself to get a volunteer application from Courtney Bennett, who um, works in online marketing as her full-time profession, and wanted to do um, take our uh, marketing associate position. Um, brought her in and met with her week before last. Gave her way too many things to do. <coughs> and she uh, took off and distributed a lot of our newsletters around town. Got back with me with several ideas. Since then, we've put her in touch with Amy Glickson so that she can um, sign on and start manipulating information on our Facebook page. Um, and uh, Nicole, at this point, has established it a priority to get in touch with Courtney um, and, again, to start talking about our Facebook page and getting information on there so that we um, are current on that. Gia, also. Gia McNearney um, is a supporter. And I met her in person for the first time at one of our yappy hours earlier in the year. Um, she expressed a desire at that time to um, uh, come to the shelter and take photographs of the adoptable cats and dogs in the shelter. Her pictures are beautiful. Um, she comes out on Wednesdays now. She spends a couple of hours at the shelter, taking as long as she needs to to even get good photographs of cats. And she has taken to posting these things on Pine Cam. And um, now she and John Bertalan, who did our um, video that he put on YouTube and on the front page of the website, are in cahoots with each other. He's getting copies of her photos to put together slideshows of our animals as well, too. Um, and she's helped with some other things around the office since she's been there. But um, she's also taken a lead role in keeping our Pet Finder page updated since Karen left, which I really appreciated. And uh, she's going to come to the silent auction and take photos at the silent auction, too. And we have more community service workers in the shelter, which means a lot to us. We're getting more cleaning done than we were before <laughs> in terms of corners and cage tops and under cages and that kind of thing. Um, does anyone have any questions about my report? Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, and I did not get a newsletter in the mail. I didn't. I pulled your sticker off, yeah. and I meant to bring some to the meeting, and I <laughs> did not do it. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Um, right. Are you I, are you going to be at the site visit next week or not? No, I not You can't don't need to be there. Tonight. Okay. Um, we'll make sure to pass you a newsletter. <laughs> I right. tried to pull off all the board board member names so that. We weren't yeah, spending yeah. postage on you, but not because you're not important. <laughs> I, read, I approved it, so I read it. So. There you go. Sorry. There you I go. Wanted to see how it looked. You need to see the pretty version. Yeah, it, it is pretty. really nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. All right. The uh, fundraising committee. We've been busy. Yeah, you sure have. <laughs> We've been busy, and um, we. I actually brought, if anybody's interested in looking at it, I brought the most up-to-date, short of two updates that were received today in the mail I didn't put on here. But I've got a um, listing which you may want to take with you home, but if anybody wants to take a look at it. Um, and we just also heard this afternoon in the mail that we've got another Central City, uh, which is just north of Black, or just west of Blackhawk, um, hotel room for one night and um, dinner, $40 max dinner. So we've got four places in Blackhawk. And um, in Central City, I'm so excited. Is it all about for the that. silent auction? Yes, this is all silent auction right now. Um, we are, you know, we've got somebody who's checking the mail at least every two days now since uh, Wendy and Steve are out of town. So we're starting to see some things coming back in. Um, we haven't. The one thing we did not get to yet is hitting the automotive. So hopefully, maybe we can just when people drive by, hit a couple of those or a few of those to see if we can get some oil changes or whatever. But um, I think we're close to stopping with the asking and then start sending out the tax, uh, the thank you slash tax receipts, tell me where I go wrong, but also letting them know where they qualify for the advertising um, benefit for their donation. So we really have some nice things coming in, some tangible things they can take away, some gift certificates they can take away, and we've got um, higher value items this year versus what we've had in past two years at least since I've you know, been working with it. Um, so I think it's making for you know, a really good auction. The next big push is going to be our advertising, you know, hitting that hard, um, which I know it was included in the newsletter. 
um, as well as um, you know following up with different uh, businesses on what you know getting us the information so we can start preparing the auction brochure and other things that we need to do with that. So I think we've been, when's our next meeting? Next meeting is Tuesday. Next Tuesday. At 6 o'clock at the ranch. Um, plan on having dinner at the meeting, partly to support Cindy, since she's a, such a huge supporter of the event itself by hosting it um, free of cost. So we figured we could support her back by actually having Maybe our meeting. Okay. Maybe comes to Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it's free to drive. Yeah, yeah, and we're starting to expand, you know, if there's people that are, like Natalie, uh, came to the last meeting and right. she's not so good even though she was going to ask a few places at asking she's like some other people <laughs> but she's good at just kind of you know digging in and doing the you know putting things together transporting so um, <laughs> right. some of those people are starting to come now too right and I've got another whole stack of the, the double-sided printouts um, so if anybody wants to take a stack with them um, as well as if, you know whatever people need them for, if we want to put a stack at the shelter um, for distribution and to give them up to businesses to post. Um, oh, for sure. So. Yeah, so that's coming along uh, nicely you know, with that. Not that it falls necessarily under this, but I know Saturday we've got the big event for the thrift store, so I'll be working on Saturday on that. But um, hopefully we'll bring in some good money on that as well. Um, I think we will. And we are getting some, collecting some things from the thrift store that would be good for either containers. Again, if we get lemongrass, right. I've got a beautiful green bowl. Right, for that. I did email. That. Okay, and um, other things. Can pick up a beautiful, looks like it's brand new, huge bird cage. But anyway, he's all psyched into that. But we'll, they're holding back things for us as well at the auction. Um, a couple of other things. I just wanted to kind of reiterate again how easy that seven hundred and fifty dollars or so was that we got from the pick up my stuff. Every other month, they, they will not award, basically the people, anybody who goes on their site, you can only vote once per computer. I was wrong when I said you could vote repeatedly. But per computer, or actually per email address, you can only vote once a month. But it's, you cannot, you can, the same not-for-profit cannot win month after month. It has to be every other month. So there's no reason why, you know, we, we went one by landslide for August. Every other month we ought to be able to get 700 to to $1,000 through you know, that organization. Yeah. So, um, you know, I sent an email out last month, Ellen, I'll copy you on it too so you can see okay, where the website is, but it's so, if you have your friends vote, it's so easy to get that. And that's what, you know, we've got to get the low hanging fruit because times are tough up here. Well, that's yeah. also something to coordinate with the new marketing person to post on Facebook and stuff. Absolutely. So we'll know. So, uh, the other yeah. thing is, I was actually down, I'm running a little late because I was coming back down from the winery from Bailey. Because <laughs> I'm trying to work that one too. Make sure that we're getting. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, I'm putting together some baskets of their things, plus, she's very psyched about I gave her, I, actually, she found what Steve had just sent her on the um, benefits. So, she's going to talk to Marcel about getting together something, whether it's accommodation, they have the bed and breakfast or whatever. And I talked up the um, advertising. You'd be so proud of me. So, uh, but one thing that I did want to let you guys know, and then we can figure out, Marta. I think you know somehow, and Nicole, we need to do a little bit more advertising. IMHS in the past has had where people vote for three or four uh, not-for-profits, and then around October, I think it was, we had the you know one day where they collected money for a brunch or whatever. They're doing it differently this year since they've been so busy with the um, the wine awards and whatever they've been going to. October 13th, just so you guys know, October 13th, they're having, um, it's a Saturday, it's one of their dinner nights, but wine bottles, if you buy bottles of wine at either location, 10% of the proceeds they're going to give to IMHS. So oh. I think that we really, you know, we can advertise this. I've got a color brochure we can just scan. And what winery is it? This is for the Aspen, I'm going to say it wrong. Aspen, Aspen Creek Peak Cellar. Aspen Peak, Peak Cellar. Cellar. Okay. Which is the bed and breakfast terrific. across from the come and go or whatever those stupid right. places over there. And then they also have the Bailey, the new winery with the new sign they just got up there. It's um, on October 13th? October 13th, which is a Saturday. So, okay. But either location, they're going to get it out, but they also asked me if we could advertise it for them. So, um, And they have a dinner that night, too, so I'm thinking about going to that. Can but I they, take that? Can mm -hmm. I take your... Okay. Yeah, and then I can give you the color one, too. I'll uh, okay. bring you in a color one, okay. too. But that's the black and white one. You can do an email blast. 
Um, so, and, and I really think part of what, and the, the other thing I wanted to let you guys know is I just came back from Atlanta, but I've got some um, resources there as well as when Cheryl and I were going around Morrison, which we got some great leads there, um, and some donations. I'm, I'm trying to look at other opportunities that we could do for next year or for the next year. And so I'm getting some ideas from other people too. And one of the things I'd like, I told you this morning, this morning, I think, but one of the things I think we can look at is raising revenues, fundraising revenues through sponsorships and businesses. I mean, I'm seeing other places getting $2,000, $2,500. I mean, we're happy if we get, you know, $5,000 for our big fundraiser. So that's something we'll be, you know, looking at, talking about, and trying to do some research on, you know, maybe we can, it, it, it takes the business membership, you know, a big step forward from there. But um, anyways, just if anybody has any ideas on that or, you know, thoughts, let us know. That's what I'd like to kind of see us do next year, too, is beyond our two fundraising events. Did you have anything else? No, I think you did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome job. Thank you, guys. The grant committee report. Um, have not had any submitted any new grant requests yet this month, uh, but we did. I was very excited to get an email from the Anschutz Family Foundation requesting that they come visit the shelter on at 12:30 on September 26th. Um, this was one that we thought was probably a long shot to submit, and yeah, Marta and Scott helped me write that one and did an awesome job. So um, we think our request was specifically for it was about for five. We made it a real, an actual number, like five thousand two hundred and seventy-six dollars or something that we estimated for emergency care. Is I think what we were trying to put it aside for. That services for special needs yeah. animals specifically special is needs, what it required. Yeah. Boy, have we had a lot of those yeah. in the last 45 days with so all we, these dental. We tried to estimate an annual sure. special needs. And so that's really exciting that they'd like to come visit. Um, I, I asked her if she needed <coughs> um, to go over any financial stuff, and she said if. If the treasurer could be there, that's great, but it's not necessary. So okay. I, I sent Wendy an email great. to see if she can make it, but it's not a big deal if she doesn't. Um, so that's it for grants right now. The tech committee, of course, the week Steve's gone is the biggest tech committee report ever. <laughs> so I put all the all of his bullet points in the agenda just so I didn't miss anything. But uh, to run over them real quick, um, the cameras were installed on 9-9. Um, I think he also got the signs installed just before he left. Um, set up the new emails for Nicole and Ellen. Uh, wrote this, the script to automatically back up ASM. It was installed on 9-9. Ken's going to ensure that it's being backed up remotely. Um, Steve's going to work on improving that as well. Um, he's going to try and modify the backup so that we don't have too many there at one time. So there's just a set number of backups so we don't run out of disk space. Um, and so the keys were sorted and labeled. There are several keys for the tech room available, but sh should it be locked again? And they are labeled in the key box. Now, also, an email was added for Bernard. Do we have a, does anybody know if we have a key to the tech room in the shelter? We accidentally locked ourselves out of the tech room one night. Well, that's what he's saying, is there, okay. there should be one in the key box. It says there are several keys for the tech room available. Should it be locked again? Oh, okay. The they, key they box. Are, I thought you meant the hanging the key, key box, box, which we don't know the code to. Oh. <laughs> so I can't get into the key box, but maybe he means the. <laughs> yeah, the tried. <laughs> yeah, Wendy came to the rescue. She had a key. But that was kind of a bummer. <laughs> Good thing those kittens were already taken care of for the night. <laughs> it's like last thing. Well, for, for open business, he says he 
they had to change the lock on the tech room. We found several Good. keys for the door and feels it should be adequate for the door, if the door gets locked again. But uh, I think we talked there. about changing it to a non-locking doorknob. Yeah, that's on his list. I would think that would be in favor of that. Yeah. Yeah. Can anybody think of a reason why we need to have a lock on that door? The tech room. Yeah. I would actually like to be able to lock people out of the tech room. It's our pharmacy. I mean, it's our primary pharmacy. Oh, so yeah, for that nice. reason, I appreciate that there is a lock on the door. Um, or if you're treating animals in there and you need to lock it to keep the public. There have been yeah, instances where we've locked okay. yeah, yeah. others okay. in the shelter out of that room for a yeah. reason. Um, so we're saying we don't want to change the lock on the tech room? Really? Well, we just need to make sure that Marta can get the keys. Okay. <laughs> we'll just want to be able to get in if we're locked out. Okay, so it'll be in the key box. Got it. <clears throat> okay, and we still is planning on doing uh, flags for White Wave for their, uh, thank you for their service. And that's it for tech committee operations. Nothing new to report that I'm aware of, Kathy. Do you have anything? Uh, yeah, we started manual our insulin. Yeah, like Marta said, it, it just lately, it yeah. seems like there's been a lot of special needs type stuff go through the clinic. One question I have for the board is, has anybody heard anything about the dental machine that was promised us six months ago that we were going to get in six months? Or does anyone even remember who to ask for that? Well, that was Joyce McClanahan. It was Joyce McClanahan. Yeah, that I think yeah. so. That had a lean. We will ask Joyce. I'll call her tomorrow, so I'll take that on. Thank you. Yeah. Can you let her know about the fundraising committee meeting on Tuesday? We're going to talk to her. Hold on. Add an event to my calendar. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, tell it, me time and location again. Um, that will go a Six p.m. next Tuesday at the ranch bar and grill okay. for dinner. Okay. It just keeps coming up and up and you know at the start it didn't seem like dentistry was going to be that big a deal but we keep getting these geriatric animals in and they need dentals in order to be healthy so. Um, and I guess my follow-up question is what would it cost us to invest or try to find a grant, what would it cost us if we had to purchase the equipment that you need and an elevator and whatever else you need to do the dentals that we're outsourcing because we are spending, I mean, we've spent a lot of money in the last 45 days on dentals, yeah. I think. Just from the estimates and maybe they take off a discount on top of what, but we've seen literally four and five hundred dollar bills and we had three cats that went at once, then we had Hoover. Now we've got another cat who's scheduled for next Wednesday, and she has to have it. It's our cat that almost died on us, we think maybe because she had a painful tooth. Mm. Um, so maybe it's smarter. What do you think, Cappy, for a... Well, the biggest thing is the machine with the drill. Yeah. That's our biggest thing. Um, I'm going to say if we could find a used one. A couple thousand dollars? Well, yeah, maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred good use um, just to make sure we don't buy something that's ready to buy on its last legs. Right. Something well, that they can actually have parts replacements for. So probably roughly that. Probably another two to three hundred for elevators and and uh, you know hand tools so to use for dentistry. Fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Yeah. We'll do that a couple Maybe I include a story about this in the holiday edition. <laughs> Try to generate some funds. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Can you think of anything more operations wise? No, except that we have this new rat terrier who came from Denver Animal Care and Control that has the suspicious spot on her back leg, and we're all a little scared of what that's going to look like after you take it off in terms of the diagnosis. If we 
Yeah. Well, it's just send that off for a biopsy. So we might have another special needs. Long going costs. You know, <clears throat> you know, the surgery and everything, of course, is is donated, but <clears throat> it still costs money to do histopathology. So there's no way around it. We need to know what it is. Is this a dog or a cat? I was it's a rat terrier. Aww. Super, super sweet and you. super cute. Super mm. cute. Super friendly too. Yeah. Adoptable. Mm-hmm. I would say so. But could have a, you know, potentially. A, I don't, I don't want to do black right. clouds, so yep. we'll just table that for now. Sorry, another quick thought is, is that uh, depending on much we're spending on lab work, we could potentially look for some um, what machines to do our own, which might save a lot, depending on what. And what do we need? We need a centrifuge, or? Yeah, we'd have to have a centrifuge. Um, probably the biggest cost would be the actual machine that does the blood work. Okay. And there's a lot of different ones out there. We don't have to have the newest. They have a lot that are used. Older, that better, costs. efficient. They do chemistries. Um, You're talking big bucks there. <coughs> really? Even for you. We Probably. need someone to die and leave us some money. 10000 for... You know? I well, mean, we, if you went up for the it certainly is worth thing out. looking into because you know, mm -hmm. uh, one question that that comes to mind is <laughs> relates back to the Clark County and the increased percentage of geriatric animals that will get men. <coughs> How? What percentage of those, just off the cuff, would you say are coming from Clark County? A few. <coughs> okay. Because most of our animals come from other sources. I mean, you know. <coughs> we've gotten a few. I mean, obviously Gretchen is the big outstanding piece yeah. from Park County, who will be with us for a while. Um, but not, not many. Oh, Marta, which which cat was Cougar? Which one was he? He was with us for about I think less than a week. Oh, it was about a, a nine-year-old, short-haired black cat. Because I couldn't remember which one he was. I don't know if you knew him, Sharon. I think maybe he was there on one one of your shifts. Yeah. We moved really quickly on taking care of his mouth yeah. because it was so causing a problem. It was last Tuesday. It was my first day. Yeah, it was first day. So I think you just saw him once. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. trying to remember him. He was probably hiding behind his litter pan when we saw him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that cat. For me. So that's it. All right. That's all for the operations report. Deb, do you mind helping us with the finance report? Um, I don't really have, because she and I were out of town at different separate times, so I just read through this. Um, and I don't know if anybody had any questions in particular. I can try to answer them if you do, but we didn't talk about anything about this report specifically. I had a question <coughs> on, uh -huh. um, I'm looking at this page that has income at the top and expenses that has shaded bar on yes. it. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to the expenses, um, Actual versus budget um, veterinary service program costs and animal services expenses. Um, there's a dramatic difference in what was actually spent versus what was budgeted for animal service expenses. And I, mm -hmm. do you have any sense at all what it would have accounted for that? I what I wonder when I'm looking at this, what I think it might be in part is remember that this year, earlier this year, not at the very beginning, we started. Um, logging donations, like pet food and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the expense side of that is coming through here. And when she prepared the budget last year, it's the same thing with if you go up to the income, where was it that we have large, um, where is it? I, I don't know if it's under sales, but remember that we've got the um, donated items that we're going to record as, as revenue, as well as its expenses. So okay. I think any food items, um, anything that's animal related that people bring in and donate uh, is probably coming in here. We can ask her when she gets back, okay. but that's, when I saw that, that's what I assumed was in there. Okay, it's, and sales at the top under income, is that the thrift shop? 
that's normally what's in there, but again, I'm not sure. Okay. If, if that includes the thrift shop, then that explains what I was looking at. But that's still quite high for now. August is usually very low. I can tell you, looking at the thrift store uh, sales log, they were even surprised at how well they did in August. Usually, August is horrible, and they did have about a few stinky days where it was like under a hundred dollars. But I mean, for the most part, I'm going to guess they averaged 150 dollars a day in August, and that's, that's great. really much better than in past summers. She had a comment in her email about some of the discrepancies. Yeah, I think supplies, if you look at income, see how the actual supplies and materials, 1302, that's probably maybe postage. That's part of that donated items that's coming through. But I know that she would split it out into, you know, it's not just in supplies and materials. It's probably going to be in a couple of places up here in the revenue, as well as down the expenses. And one would stand to reason animal services for the food that's donated and other things that are specific for the animals. Okay. What is the difference between restricted and unrestricted donation income? Some uh, grants or donations are specifically for cats okay. or for dogs or for um, spay and neuter. Spay and okay. neuter is the biggest yeah. restricted fund. And, but we also have some donors, one of our largest donors, particularly just donates to cats. Yeah, she earmarks all of her donations for cats. And Wendy keeps a spreadsheet um, that identifies how much has been spent, how much is left. So, and if you look at the back when you get it, if you look at the back of your newsletter, mm -hmm. where it has you know a section you can clip off and send it with a donation, right. they have the different Those, programs. Right. Okay. So if it's specific to something that is help the helpers or something, I can't remember what it's called. That's an unrestricted donation. Type. Oh, that's unrestricted. Right. And when people send in just a donation in general, okay. unless they specify that's restricted for a certain cause, like one big donor for cats, okay. it's unrestricted. Thank you. Anything else on finance? Okay. I don't think we have any open business from Last month, um, new business, there were a couple of long email discussions that I just wanted to give anybody the opportunity to, to talk about in person. I know most of them will be better discussed with Stephen when you're present as well. But um, First off, I listed the, member, the director application and the membership requirement on it. Um, I think uh, I already, you know, shared this with Ellen in the discussion that we had with Ellen. Um, but since she just went through this, and I thought it would be good to get her her uh, thoughts on how she interpreted the application and why maybe she didn't um, realize that it was a requirement for her to be a member before she even applied. Uh, because it says a requirement to be a board director is to be a current IMHS member at an annual fee of blah blah blah. Doesn't say anything about applying that you have to be a member to apply for the board. So I actually thought the wording was crystal clear. And my actually lawyer, contract lawyer that lives with me, um, did a sanity check and <laughs> she agreed. And so she wondered if maybe that well, that don't... wasn't the intent of the statement. That the, the statement says one thing, but maybe you guys meant something else. Well, the whole, <clears throat> I don't know how much you've been, uh, were a part of all of this. The whole point was it's in the bylaws that, that uh, a, a person has to be a member of the society before they can be elected to the board. So it's semantics to a large degree. I hope you didn't take any No, I am not said don't take it personally, yeah. so don't worry about it. So it's, it's just the history, the recent past history. I think this board is trying to be very careful to follow the bylaws because that hasn't been the case in the past. So actually what my lawyer cousin said was that the statement would need to be changed to something like, 
a requirement to apply to be a board of a member of the board of directors is to be a current mm -hmm. blah 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 so it's just like a a little tiny wording change right if that's the intent yeah of what you guys wanted in order to follow the bylaws okay yeah the, the only thing what i would i i mean i totally understand both sides of this um and it all comes down to the intentions of the person i mean if a somebody who just walks in off the street you know maybe would be weary you know wary of their intentions and but a, a long-term volunteer maybe not so worried about but i would point out that the declaration just where you signed does say i am a member of imhs and i understand that i must renew my membership yeah that's that is so true it yeah. does say that right above where you signed right um, so, so, so really, there's just basically two conflicting statements within exactly. the application. Yeah. So, if well, can I make a motion to change the wording, mm -hmm. or would you prefer that we wait until? If you have wording that you think is appropriate, then make a motion. How would you like it to read? Would you like would, to see? Yeah. So the, the last sentence, I believe. That. Yeah, we don't have to. I mean, we're not going to have anybody apply to be a director anytime soon. I don't expect. So. So something we can. I yeah, can, we can even do it through okay. emails. I can email the. I'll re email the application that back out, good. and everybody can read through it again and see. Um, so I mean, I, I think. I had no intention of declaring anybody as being officially a board member in Chloe verified her membership um, but I do understand that you know that it could be a waste of the board's time to go through the voting process and application process if the person wasn't going to be a member so yeah I mean I I don't I personally don't I'm not worried about it either way we want to change it so that this sentence says I don't think there's any big hurry yeah, so it's yeah. to be, you know. It should be consistent, I agree. Yeah. We need to change one place or the other. Right, yeah. either the by, either the bylaws right. or the two things in here just basically have to agree so everything yeah. says the right. same yeah. thing. It really makes sense. Mm -hmm. And we can do it through emails. I mean, I think it's easy enough <laughs> when everybody's back. Yeah. And um, could you send out, the, also if you send this out, Matt, the, the piece of the bylaw, what it says in the bylaws? Just that little you need to get a, a copy of the bylaws. We need to get yeah. Steve to give us all the right <laughs> bylaws because the last bylaws that he sent yeah, out right. were not the updated oh. bylaws. Those are just the corrections that he sent out. Remember all that we went through the membership meeting and it wasn't the whole bylaws. Because it, it was, was on the yellow paper. No, but he sent out an email that said bylaws and it had the, and that was the one I was reading when I said, well, I don't see where it says this in the bylaws. Because those are the corrections, at least that's the one I got, so it wasn't the bylaws entirely. So, yeah, he sent a. I think they're on the Google Docs, possibly, aren't they? No, I thought old ones are in the Google Docs. I can't oh. find the new ones in Google Docs. So, I we definitely need to get that okay. up there so we can. So, I, all our documents are in Google Docs yes. via that account? Yes. Okay, I didn't. There's a, if you look at the documents, the, the their internet here seems to be down, but uh, that's okay. I can. Um, I, I just went to the email one right away, and I didn't even. There think was probably a, more there. <laughs> yeah, or it's called Drive now. It's Google okay. it's Docs. It's called Google Drive. But uh, so I haven't read through all those. But you're saying those bylaws on there now haven't been corrected with. When I searched by the word bylaws and the bylaws that I found were the, you know, 2002 approved bylaws. It was not the. Huh. 2012 by the way. 2002? It's the ones we changed yeah. that were revised oh. the last meeting for the 2002. Okay. Yeah. But I don't I don't recall ever seeing a revised version in the final wording after it was voted on, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah not I think he he intended to do it and just there was an e there's an email from a month or two ago tied the subject was bylaws. 
that Steve sent out September 2nd. Here's a copy of the updated bylaws. Yeah, that's just the corrections that we did about the huh. bylaws. So, yeah, we need to get that. Yeah, we do. Fin 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 <laughs> finish Along with the bio and everything and else. Make sure that all the documents at the shelter are in the updated bylaws and everything as well. Um, okay. So I will all go ahead and email out this director application to everyone so we can read, read it and reword it. So the, the last new business was the euthanasia policy um, regarding emergency euthanasia. So I mean, ba based on, this came up based on our policy, the um, the euthanasia of Hoover did not um, adhere to the policy. Um, and I, I mean, I don't, there's no question that the right thing was done, but, mm -hmm. but, what, but, but we need to make sure that we're following the policy, and if we need to change the policy, then we need to change the policy. Um, Matt, what does the policy say as far as if it's an emergency like that? Is it just contact and get one approval from an executive committee person, or does it take the Once majority of the executive committee? In emergency cases where an animal has suffered a severe injury or when an animal is in acute distress and the attending veterinarian has determined the survival of the animal is unlikely, the attending veterinarian will immediately contact at least one member of the executive committee committee for euthanasia approval. The attending veterinarian would, will contact. Which I think that can be stretched to be through, through, through the staff. There's a few things that yeah. actually need to be changed yeah. with yeah. that because um, I don't know if acute, in this particular situation, I don't know that acute distress and won't survive, you know, is, imminent death was not something that was um, imminent suffering, I think, is more mm -hmm. more right. appropriate that's, in this case. And, that's uh, not covered in the emergency euthanasia section. Yeah. So um, I think there's a few things that we need to change. You know, it's clearly a consideration in the euthanasia considerations. Um, but that being the case, if you can't, if by the policy, it's not defined as an emergency that way, then the entire board has 24 hours to vote on it, um, which... This was an emergency. I agree, so. but, but as Marta's saying, mm -hmm. that the wording in this sentence doesn't necessarily... So it makes it I think maybe more succinctly we need to just say emergency. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on what you just read, actually, I mean, acute distress, and that yeah, seems I like think someone the, should immediately make a decision. To yeah, I think do. I mean, if it's an attending veterinarian. Well, the yeah, it shouldn't necessarily be the has determined the survival of the animal is unlikely. Is should be reported. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily survival if the, if the animal's in pain. So. Um, again, we don't have to reword this right now, but this one, so we can't, the, you know, so I, I said it in the email, but, you know, the membership does have to approve this as part of the bylaws that we just changed mm -hmm. in, uh, in May, is the membership does have to approve any changes to the euthanasia policy. So we can... We, we, we get, do you know how many members we have right now? 167. Okay, so we would need 15 members here. It's either the minimum of 15 or 10% of the membership, whichever is lower, would need to be at the meeting. We could do that which, at the next meeting. Yeah, which is pretty easy. But we do also need to give 30 days notice of of the changes, just like we did with uh, okay, the bylaw changes. changes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I think maybe the November more. meeting. Yeah. It's, we can we can get this in the approval, but in the interim, the if if we want Dave or Cappy to be a decision maker, 
mean, I, I don't see any reason that they can't be part of the decision process as the as everything stands right now. You know, if Marta called me tomorrow and said we need to make a decision, I would call Dave or Kathy right away as well if she hadn't already talked to Dave or Kathy. So, I, mean, I think that that's a really smart point, Matt, and that that's something that needs to be taken into consideration. I, just, I think talking to Dr. Dave about that the other day is um, if there's a, a swift decision that needs to be made, whoever I'm going to contact needs to be somebody with um, enough knowledge of animal um, health so that an informed decision can be made very quickly. Um, so maybe the wording needs to be changed to just include part of our, you know, just include our veterinary team. What if we don't have a veterinary team on the board of directors? Yeah. We'll have a veterinary team somewhere. It doesn't need to be a board member. Yeah, I think we need to be I'm clear. just throwing that out there. I'd like you guys but to be clear. If I were to call, vacation. if it were to be debt that I would call, for example, I don't know if she knows anything about bone cancer, if she mm -hmm. understands the sense of urgency when you have an animal who's under sedation and you have a clinic that's at a standstill waiting to hear back and that that's a very poor prognosis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Know that she understands all the layers, or whoever I would mm -hmm. call would understand all the layers medically that need to be understood to make a decision like that. Um, so I think that that's the key point that needs to be taken into consideration with whatever wording we come up with um, in how we decide we want to change the policy. Yeah, and Kathy was on the committee until she stopped being the secretary, we have defined that committee as president, vice president, secretary, but there's no, nothing in the bylaws that define it that way. That's just how it's been. So, you know, we can... Yeah, the bylaws say president and two board members. Yes. <coughs> so if if we need to, before, we, before November, if we want to before we can change the policy, if we want to uh, um, get Kathy or Dave as a decision maker, then, then somebody would have to step down from the committee. And that that's really up to you guys is how urgent that is. I mean, I, I guess uh, we seem to have something once a month lately. I mean, not necessarily euthanasia, but. We don't euthanize unless it's an emergency right. anyway. Right. But, you know, I yeah. mean, this one was well, we, a particularly time-sensitive emergency yeah. versus... We've had at least one yeah. mm -hmm. death every month for mm -hmm. several months. Not necessarily euthanasia, but... Interesting. Well, Marta and I, of course, now the Colby Hunt, tend to work together pretty closely. I'm very accessible, and that's why she called me. Yeah. Being familiar with Hoover and that, and I just told her that we needed to have euthanasia didn't really think about, you know, the executive committee on that. I certainly understand your point, but I agree with Marta, it needs to be somebody with some background because there's going to be times when there's gray areas mm -hmm. where you're not going to know that attending vet, if it's off-site, may say, well, you know, I don't think this is great or whatever. We may have a different opinion and know that we can do something well, do we, for it. So I don't know how you want to handle it until we decide. Do we create a euthanasia committee and have the executive committee and Dave and Kathy on the euthanasia committee, or not necessarily euthanasia committee, but do we create, we could create a new committee and redefine the euthanasia policy to, to uh, refer to that committee so that it can be the executive committee plus others without changing our bylaws to redefine the executive committee. So that, that's an option. We, we, need, we need to do it in a, a way that, you know, if Dave and Kathy ever decide to leave the board of directors. Right, we need to have some foresight we, about yeah, it. Mm -hmm. We need to have a way to appoint somebody new to that role. So, so by doing it this other way, you wouldn't need the, the 15 people or 10 percent because you're not working on the bylaws? No, we would still need to change the, so we changed, just changed the bylaws to include that the euthanasia policy 
has to be approved by members also. So we would still need to have the meeting of the members to change it so that